Hello, my name is Pravanjan Anand and I'm going to talk about secure quantum extraction protocols. This is joint work with Rolando L. Laplaca, from, who is a graduate student at MIT. So I'm going to talk about knowledge extraction uh, and knowledge extraction is one of the um, uh, important concepts uh, that is useful in uh, the design of cryptographic protocols. So for instance, um, you know, it is very useful in secure multi-party computation. Um, so in order to prove uh, security of a secure multi-party computation protocol, um, we need to come up with a simulator that can extract inputs from the adversarial properties, uh, adversarial parties. It also shows up in zero knowledge. Um, so if you look at the seminal FLS paradigm, um, the simulator works by first extracting a trapdoor from the adversarial uh, verifier and then uses this extracted uh, uh, trapdoor to, to simulate the rest of the protocol. So what are the extraction techniques that we have at our disposal? So one extraction technique is, uh, you know, that, that we are all too familiar with is the uh, rewinding technique. Um, this is this technique has been quintessential to proving security of several uh, cryptographic protocols. Uh, but it has been observed that you know um, you know the rewinding technique itself is not sufficient to prove security of uh, several protocols. So in order to circumvent this problem, um, there were other techniques proposed. Uh, for instance, the similar work of Barak proposes the non-black box uh, uh, simulation technique um, and the, the work of uh, PASS proposes super polynomial time extraction technique and so on. And, you know, it's sort of fair to say that most results on secure computation and uh, zero knowledge uh, rely on these three extraction techniques. You know, of course, there are other extraction techniques proposed as well, but most of them typically rely on uh, uh, some version of these three techniques. You know, when we talk about extraction techniques, um, who are we extracting from? You know, we are extracting from adversaries. Um, so a natural question to ask is, how is uh, an adversary modeled? And traditionally, uh, we model the adversary to be a classical probabilistic polynomial time algorithm. However, given the recent advances in quantum computing, um, it might be possible that many, 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 many years in, into the future, um, a full-fledged quantum computer um, can can come into existence. Um, so you know, which means that we need to be prepared from now on. Uh, we need to start designing protocols that are secure, even if um, the adversary um, can have access to uh, a full-fledged quantum computer. Um, so in order to um, design protocols that are, that are secure, even if quantum computers come into existence, you know, the first starting point is to model the adversary as a quantum polynomial time algorithm. So now we can ask that, you know, if the adversary is, uh, is, is a quantum polynomial time algorithm, then are there, do there uh, exist uh, post-quantum secure protocols? Um, and it turns out that um, towards developing these post-quantum secure uh, protocols, um, it turns out that the existing uh, extraction techniques or simulation techniques that helped us in designing um, classical classical secure protocols will fail in the in the post quantum setting. Right. So, so for instance, the traditional rewinding um, doesn't work um, as is uh, in the quantum setting. Uh, and the main reason is uh, because of the no cloning theorem in quantum mechanics uh, that tells us that, you know, given in, uh, given any, any state, um, we cannot clone it uh, to obtain, you know, another copy of the state. 
and it also turns out that Barack's non-black box uh, technique doesn't work. Um, and actually, there are many reasons why uh, Barack's technique doesn't work. And one one main reason is uh, because you know the, the core part of Barack's protocol is uh, the universal arguments, and um, uh, we don't know how to design universal arguments for quantum computation. At least we don't know yet how to do this. So while um, general rewinding-based strategies uh, don't work in the post-quantum setting, um, Watrous and Andrew observed that you can um, actually achieve rewinding-based strategies in, in the post-quantum setting, um, but uh, the class of rewinding strategies are highly restrictive. Um, so, so it's not possible to take any rewinding wave strategy and just uh, port it to the quantum setting. Um, uh, at least we don't know of such a generic theorem. Uh, on the other hand, um, we don't even have any uh, non-black box technique known in the post-quantum setting. So in this work, we give a clean definition that captures knowledge extraction against uh, quantum polynomial time adversaries. Um, so we're going to give two uh, new quantum extraction techniques that satisfy this uh, definition. And um, as an application of uh, one of uh, these two techniques, we show how to construct uh, a zero knowledge protocol um, that is uh, that has uh, that is sound against classical polynomial time uh, provers. But uh, on the other hand, it gives uh, uh, it, it guarantees zero knowledge against quantum polynomial time verifiers. So it's a strict generalization of uh, classical ZK. Okay, so we want this uh, this notion to satisfy three properties. Uh, the first property uh, is called correctness of extraction. It states that. Um, you know, the extractor should be able to extract W from a quantum sender. Um, here we require the extraction guarantee to only hold if the sender behaves uh, according to the protocol. I mean, it can choose whatever randomness it wants in the protocol, but uh, it needs to behave according to the protocol. Um, so um, the, we say that in uh, a secure quantum extraction protocol satisfies the correctness property if um, the extractor can extract a witness in this setting. Um, the second property is called indistinguishability of the of extraction. Um, the sender should not be able to um, that the malicious quantum sender should not be able to distinguish whether it is uh, interacting with the extractor or the receiver. So uh, this is the second property. And the third property is, uh, is called the simulatability property. Um, you know, a malicious uh, receiver um, should not be able to learn the witness from the center. Um, I mean, this is, this is uh, formalized by um, defining a simulator and um, you know, we, we say that uh, the simulatability property is satisfied if um, the, the you know the receiver cannot distinguish whether it is interacting with the sender or with the simulator. Um, and here you can ask uh, whether the receiver is a classical or a quantum adversary, um, and uh, we consider two notions. Um, you know, one is one is called the classical simulatability property. The other is called quantum simulatability property. So we want extraction always against quantum senders, but uh, the receiver can either be classical or quantum. In both cases are interesting. Okay, so what are our results? Um, the first result is the following: we show that there exists a quantum extraction protocols that is. Um, secure against quantum receivers, meaning that it satisfies quantum simulatability properties, um, assuming the existence of uh, quantum fully homomorphic encryption, satisfying some uh, additional natural properties, 
um, and uh, the other assumption is quantum hardness of learning with errors. Um, so what is quantum polymorphic encryption? It is uh, a natural quantum analog of uh, polymorphic encryption to the quantum setting. So in this case, um, you know, the we can encrypt a quantum state uh, and the server can actually perform a quantum computation homomorphically on this um, on this quantum state on this encrypted quantum state uh, and the result will be the encryption of uh, applying this quantum circuit on the on the original state and um, there are um, lattice based constructions of quantum polymorphic encryption known. Um, um, so, so we we assume quantum polymorphic encryption for unbounded depth com computations. But if you don't only stick to bounded depth computations, then you can actually construct from just quantum hardness of learning with errors. Okay, um, this sort of extraction technique also showed up in this. Uh, um, in, in a concurrent work uh, by Nerbitonsky and Omri Shmueli. Um, our second result is the following. Uh, we show the existence of uh, quantum extraction protocols uh, satisfying classical simulatability property, assuming quantum hardness of learning with errors. Um, and an additional nice property uh, about our construction is that it satisfies quantum lasting security. Uh, what does this mean? Um, so we are in we are still in 2020. Um, we don't have a full fledged uh, scalable quantum computer. Um, so we can we can we can consider crypto protocols that are secure against classical adversaries. You know the classical adversary will try to learn the witness from the center. It won't be able to do that. It won't be able to learn the witness. But maybe 40 years from now, when quantum computers do come into existence, you know, at this point, uh, it is possible that this receiver might try to use the quantum computer, um, you know, to break the transcript of conversation and to learn the witness of the sender. Okay, so it might it might actually use this. Um, that the power of quantum computer to to break the uh, to violate the privacy of the sender. Um, so we want to prevent this. Um, and uh, to prevent this scenario, uh, Undru proposed uh, the the following notion. You know the security should hold even if the classical uh, adversary can use the quantum computer long after the the, the protocol is finished. I mean, he called it everlasting security, but we prefer to use the name uh, quantum lasting security. Okay. Um, as an application of this second result, we show how to construct constant round zero knowledge arguments uh, against uh, uh, quantum verifiers. I mean, this is still classical soundness, but we have we satisfy zero knowledge against quantum verifiers. Um, so why is this useful? So suppose let's say, you know, you have a user that is actually talking to a big company. Um, and, you know, suppose let's say, you know, the user needs to convince uh, company X that it has the right credentials uh, in order to access the system. Uh, maybe it needs to, the user needs to reveal some sensitive information uh, in order to convince company X. Now the question is, is it possible for the user to convince the company without uh, revealing its sensitive information? Um, you know, of course, we can we can use the, the notion of zero knowledge to do this. Um, but this creates a problem if, uh, you know, this company has access to a quantum computer. Right? I think it might uh, still be reasonable to assume that, you know, big corporations might have access to quantum computers um, uh, long before uh, 
uh, everyday users will get access to quantum computers. So in this case, you know, the user is still like a classical entity and is talking to uh, a malicious, a company who is possibly malicious and has access to a quantum computer. Um, and in this case, you know, the question is whether zero knowledge still holds. Right? And this is why we need uh, to use zero knowledge protocols that are secure, even if the verifier is, is a quantum adversary. Okay, so in this case, the uh, user is classical, but the server is quantum. So we show that um, there exists a constant round uh, classical argument system with uh, post-quantum zero knowledge property, assuming quantum hardness of learning with errors. Um, and in the con in the concurrent work, uh, um, uh, Nair, Vitansky and Omrish Muili gave a beautiful construction of uh, the first constant round QCK for NP, which actually gets a stronger quantum soundness property that is uh, it's secure even if the prover is uh, quantum, uh, but it is based on QFHE uh, uh, as against just QLWE. Um, so there are a few um, related works and uh, these two are the, the most prominent works in the literature. Um, the first is the seminal work of Watrous, who showed the first feasibility result on quantum ZK for NP. Um, you know, the advantage of Watrous was that it gave unconditional soundness. Um, uh, it, it satisfied unconditional soundness. Um, but on the other hand, uh, it had non-constant number of rounds. Um, Undru also demonstrated quantum ZK proof of knowledge protocol. Uh, and in particular, he showed how to extract from unbounded proofers. Um, but um, on the downside, again, the number of rounds was not constant. So we will start uh, with our uh, extraction, give, give me an overview of our extraction techniques. So let's start with the first one. Um, the starting point to this quantum extraction technique is uh, the test of quantumness protocol um, that was devised by Brekarsky et al. Um, and uh, how is this test of quantumness protocol useful? Uh, using this protocol, the receiver actually can convince the sender that it is indeed a quantum computer. Um, and if the sender gets convinced, then um, then it will send the witness to the receiver, otherwise it sends nil. So, of course, the indistinct surety of uh, extraction uh, property is not satisfied here. Um, and the reason is because, you know, the honest receiver is not going to pass the test of quantumness protocol, but the extractor is going to pass the protocol. So this way, the sender can know whether it is talking to the extractor or the receiver. So to overcome this problem, we first of all observe that, um, you know, the test of quantumness protocol of Prakarsky et al. is like a four, four round uh, protocol. Um, and uh, what you can do is that uh, um, you can use a two party computation protocol you know, where the input to this 2PC from the receiver side is going to be the fourth message. And from the sender side, it's going to be the witness. And this 2PC is going to output the witness to the receiver if uh, indeed, uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the sender um, is convinced that the receiver is indeed the quantum protocol, a uh, quantum quantum computer, right? So the functionality has the first, second, and third message hardwired inside it. Um, and it takes the fourth message from the receiver and it checks if um, indeed uh, the receiver passed the test of quantumness uh, protocol, um, uh, test of quantumness, and if so, it outputs the witness to the receiver. You know, of course, um, you know, as is, uh, this is not sufficient because um, how do we know if uh, the receiver actually committed the uh, 
correct fourth message in this two PC protocol. Um, so in order to uh, argue simulatability property, we have to sort of extract this fourth message from the receiver. And uh, in order for us to do that, uh, we are going to make the receiver commit the fourth message using an extractable commitment scheme. And um, this extractable commitment scheme has the property that, you know, if um, the, the committer is a classical adversary, then you can actually extract from the receiver. And um, we do know of uh, such uh, extractable commitment schemes. Um, and thus, using this, you can actually um, show that this this sort of uh, uh, this sort of template uh, can be um, can can actually satisfy classical simulatability property and extraction against uh, quantum senders. So this was uh, a whirlwind overview of uh, the first extraction technique. Um, going to the second quantum extraction technique, which is going to be the non-black box extraction technique. Um, and the main tool we are going to use is a two circular insecure quantum fully homomorphic encryption scheme. Um, you know, what, what is this? What is two circular insecurity? Um, so before that, I want to mention that we can actually remove the two circular in security part using quantum fully morphic encryption and quantum learning with errors, um, just like the way um, Pitansky, Kala, uh, Kurana, and Panit uh, did in stock 2019. Okay, so what is this uh, two circular insecurity? Uh, it says the following you know, given encryption of uh, secret KSK2 under PK1, and given another encryption of uh, SK1 under PK2 and given encryption of X under PK1, um, we should be able to recover X, right? So, so given this cycle, PK1, um, SK2 and PK2, SK1, if I give you encryption of X, you should be able to recover X. Okay, so what is the protocol? Um, the sender is going to send encryption of R under PK1 um, it's also going to XOR, R, uh, and W, the witness W. Then it's also going to send encryption of uh, the secret KSK1 under a new public key PK2. So then the receiver is going to send R prime. Uh, and the sender, you know, will send SK2 if R prime is R. Otherwise, it sends bot. It, it sends nil. Um, so now, how do we show that? Uh, how do we show the correctness of extraction? Um, so we're going to do non-black box extraction. That is, the extractor has the code of the sender. Um, so suppose let's say the sender is a quantum polynomial time adversary. Um, you know, he'll send this first message as before. But now, what the extractor will do is it will copy the first message, which is encryption of uh, R under PK1. So then what it's going to do is that it's going to homomorphically evaluate the sender. Right? So this is this is the insight. Um, once you do that, you'll end up with encryption of um, sender, uh, output of sender of R under PK1, right? Um, so this, when I say sender of R, you know, I'm, I'm uh, implicitly also incorporating the state of the sender in this. Um, so, but but what is the output of sender of R? Um, so, if you go back earlier, um, you know, if if uh, you give R to the sender, the sender is going to give SK two, right? So, thus um, thus you get um, the final ciphertext to be encryption of uh, SK two under PK one. So now you have uh, encryption of pk of r under pk1 encryption of sk1 under pk2 and you also have encryption of sk2 under pk1 so now that you have a cycle and encryption of r under pk1 using the circular insecurity you can now recover r so once you recover r you can now recover the witness so 
thus thus uh, uh, correctness of extraction is satisfied um of course in this case the sender can again detect whether it is talk talking to the uh, receiver or the extractor um this is because you know the receiver is never going to send an r that's equal the r prime that's e that equals r uh, but on the other hand the, uh, the um, extractor is always going to uh, input r to the sender um albeit in a in an encrypted fashion but still um so now the sender can actually uh, you know detect so to overcome this problem we we're going to again use uh secure computation to pc um and uh, we're going to make the receiver um uh, input r prime to the, this uh, to pc and we're going to make the sender input sk2 into this uh, uh to pc and um, you know internally this uh, to pc is going to check if um um you know r prime is the same as r and if so it outputs uh, sk1 right uh, otherwise it um, you know otherwise it it um um otherwise it uh, outputs bot so now that you have sk1 you can recover r and once you have r you can recover w okay so uh to conclude we we propose uh, two new extraction techniques um you know this is uh, my opinion just a beginning uh, we need uh, many more uh, extraction techniques in the uh, quantum setting to push the envelope of um, building zero knowledge and secure computation protocols um and we also show the application of our extraction technique to the post quantum zero knowledge setting Thanks.